This video was brought to you by Indently.io. Learning Python made simple. How's it going everyone? In today's video, we're going to be learning about the differences between is and is equal to, because it's something very fundamental that everyone should know about in Python. And unfortunately, a lot of people use this wrong. For example, we might have a variable called A, which will have the value of one, and then we will have another variable called b, which will also contain the value of one. Now, if you want to compare these two, you would type in a is equal to b. And what that's going to return to us is true because they are equal. But now if we were to insert is, you'll notice that that's also going to return true to us. So at this point, you're probably going to think that these are interchangeable, which is a huge mistake and will lead to bugs in your code eventually. Anyway, let's get started by learning the difference between is and is equal to. And we're practically going to use the same variables, except here I'm going to set b to two. And I'm going to print a is equal to b and a is b side by side. And theoretically, is equal to compares the value of each one of these objects. So one is being compared to two. Is on the other hand, compares the identity of two objects. So it's pretty much asking, is A the same as B in terms of identity? Are they the exact same object? And both of these are going to return false because A does not contain the same value as B and A is also not the same object as B. To find out the identity of an object, you can use the inbuilt function ID followed by the object you want to check it for. So ID of A and ID of B. If these two IDs are not the same, then is is going to return false. If they happen to be the same, that means they are the exact same object. So is is going to return true. So let's move on to an example where I can demonstrate two objects having the same value, but different IDs. And for this example, I'm going to create a class called number, which will take an initializer and a value of type integer. And initializers return nothing. So I'm just going to specify none. And the self dot value is going to equal the value. Then we're just going to create a comparison method here or dunder method. And that's going to return to us a Boolean. And we're going to return self dot value is equal to other dot value. That's how we're going to handle comparisons for number. Then we can type in n1 of type number is going to equal this number with the value of 10. Then we can create n2, which will contain number with the value of 10 as well. So both of these contain the exact same value, which means that when we compare these via the comparison operator, what we will get back is true because they contain the exact same value. But if we were to check whether they are the same object, that's going to return false because each one of these have their own IDs. They are both unique objects. One way to get this to return true is to create a reference to one of these objects. So for example, we could say, n1 ref, which stands for reference, is equal to n1. This does not create a copy, it just creates a reference. Or in other words, it's literally just an alias that points to n1, which means we can now check whether n1 is equal to n1 reference. And that's going to return true because it is the exact same object. n1 reference is just pointing to n1. But now let's go back to what I had earlier at the beginning of the tutorial. So here we have x of type integers equal to one and y of type integers equal to one. Why does this return true? I mean, they are different objects, but for some reason, this still returns true. Even if we write 100, this will still return true. Well, that's because Python caches and reuses integers between the range of minus five and 256. And I'm just gonna write that out so you can visually understand. Minus five, two, 256. And these are inclusive. So Python caches these and reuses these as part of an effort to improve memory usage and to optimize performance in Python. So practically what that means is that they're going to share the same ID because they're pointing both to a small number. And if we were to type in ID of X and ID of Y, we're going to get the same ID back because it's using that Python magic to improve memory usage and optimize performance. But once again, you should avoid doing this because it is not stable. Is was not built for this. It can return false positives and break at any moment. 
And in PyCharm, when you create a script, you won't see this breaking. This might return false, but it also might return true. It's just unstable. The best way to demonstrate how unstable it is, is to open up the Python console. Here we can type in a is equal to, let's say 3000, and b is equal to 3000. Now, when we type in a is b, what you're going to get back is false because these are not the same object. In this case, they contain the exact same value, but they are not the same object. Now, if we were to type in a is equal to five and b is equal to five, and then once again, check whether a is b, you'll notice that that will return true because it's in the range of minus five to 256. And once again, if you were to run this in PyCharm, it might return true or it might return false. It's not stable. So do not use is to compare values in Python. Only use it for identity. And the same thing goes for strings. So here we're going to type in S1 of type string is equal to Bob. Then we're going to have string two, which is equal to join the list of B O B. And both of these are going to give us back the same value. If we were to print S1 is equal to S2, they're both going to contain Bob. And we can also print the representation of each one of these, S1 and of S2. And you'll see in the console that they are both the exact same string. But now if we were to check whether S1 is S2, you'll see that this is going to return false. And that can be because we generated this string dynamically. We didn't just hard code it, which can lead to creating a different ID. But just like with integers, small strings may be cached, which means S1 and S2 in this example are going to return true. So once again, it's just not a good idea to use is to compare the values because some objects are going to temporarily share the exact same ID. And I often use is to explain another rookie mistake that a lot of beginner devs make when they are learning Python. For example, here we have a list of names, which will be of type string, and that's going to equal Bob, Ben, and Brad. Now we're going to create a copy of this list, names underscore copy, and that's just going to equal names. Now we can print whether names is names underscore copy, and what we're going to get back is true because these are the exact same object. And a lot of beginners think this is the appropriate way to create a copy of a list in Python when all they're doing is actually creating a reference. And creating a reference just means that if we were to refer to this fake copy and remove an element such as Bob, it's going to end up affecting both lists. So if we print, let's say, names underscore copy, we're going to get Ben and Brad. So the beginner is going to be super happy that this actually worked because they think it only affected the copy. But as soon as we print the original, they're going to learn that they lost Bob forever. Now look at what you've done. You've erased Bob from existence. I hope you're happy. So once again, using names is names underscore copy should make it apparent or obvious that you're working on the exact same object. That's why removing it from the copy actually affected the original because it wasn't really a copy. If they really wanted a copy, they should have used the copy method for a shallow copy or the deep copy method for a deep copy. As you can see now it actually worked as they expected it to. And since this is now an official copy, checking the IDs will return false because they are not the same object anymore. So to sum it up, if you want to make sure you're dealing with the exact same object when you are working on it, you can use is to ensure that the identity of the objects match. Is equal to should only be used when you are comparing the values. Anyway, that's really all I wanted to cover in today's video. Do let me know in the comment section down below whether you have any more questions. But otherwise, with all that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.